उच्चतम शिक्षा वह है जो हमें न केवल जानकारी देती है बल्कि हमारे जीवन का सभी आयामों के साथ सामंजस्य भी बिटाती है नवाचार एक नया विचार एक नया व्यवहार है जो शिक्षा को सरल उपयोगी व्यवहारिक तथा रुचिकर बनाता है बच्चों के बहुमुखी और संपूर्ण विकास के लिए कदम कदम पर नवाचारों की आवश्यकता रहती है जो उनमें सकारात्मकता नैतिक मूल्य और आदर्शों का पलवन करता है मंच पर आमंत्रित करती हूं अपने सहयोगी ऋतु को थैंक यू कोमल विद दिस नाउ वी मूव ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट सेशन लर्निंग टू लीव फ्रॉक इनोवेटिव पेडागॉजीज टू ट्रांसफॉर्म एजुकेशन with students back into the campus schools and colleges must become a center for mental gymnastics if we were to guide a generation of future leaders the classroom space needs to be reimagined any change in the nation's trajectory always stems from its youth this can be done by redefining the class space to channelize the youth power with fresh learning cycles Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the dignified presence of a panelist in the session. Please join me to accord a hearty welcome to Dr. Joseph Emmanuel, Director Academic CBSE. We have the illustrious Mr. Gwen App Harry, CEO XP School Trust United Kingdom, the very eminent Mr. Sridhar Rajagopalan, co-founder Educational Initiatives Group. the dynamic mr atul khosla founder and vice chancellor shulini university i extend a hearty welcome to the moderators of the session who would take the discussion forward the distinguished dr usha ram erstwhile chairperson npsc and academic head inclick world digital institute consultant harper collins india we also have the illuminating and scholarly presence of mr lv segal former chairperson npsc and principal bal bharti public school gangaram hospital mark dr aparna sibalak executive member npsc and principal cambridge school shrinivaspuri has kindly consented to be the coordinator of the session over to you ma'am i would request Dr. Usha Ram to begin the session. Uh, very good afternoon. I think people can hear me. I'm audible. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, in this session of learning to learn is our main theme. Innovative pedagogies to transform education is our today's session. our two day seminar in which we have been talking about bridging the gap for sustainable and inclusive learning world and we have been having wonderful sessions for the this is our eighth session so seven sessions have been really wonderful and i'm i feel very proud that you know our this session is also going to be very very fruitful with having such illustrious you know uh, eminent educationists who are there with us you know i i take this opportunity to say that dr joseph manuel director academic cbsc mr harris from who is specialized in the field of experiential learning he is there from uk and then we have mr atul khosla founder and vice chair chancellor of shulini university specialized in innovative pedagogies which are very very enjoyable and flexible and then we have mr shridhar uh, rajgopalan ji and of course my colleague my friend mr lv segal the former chairperson of npsc it's wonderful to have all of you i take this opportunity to start the session with mr joseph emmanuel who is who has contributed um team number of you know areas that he has worked with but still a pivotal role in developing online initiatives towards high technology ways his active involvement in bringing innovative innovations in education and administration and guiding academics integration of technology with examination system and 
e-affiliation system, competency-based learning and learning outcomes. A great friend of NPSC and has been involving and associating us and helping us to remain front runners in the field of education, especially innovative pedagogies. Welcome you, sir. And I take this opportunity to welcome all the members who are here with us. And I'll be requesting, of course, Mr. Uh, you know, our friend L.B. Sagalji will be taking them separately. And looking forward to hear from our friend, Dr. Joseph, who is going to probably take up experiential learning, toy-based, uh, you know, uh, discovery-based learning, holistic learning, and then inquiry-based learning. Now, just to put it in some words, I would like to mention that if I take the literal meaning of pedagogy, which term boils down to different teaching methods. The study of different teaching methods is basically the pedagogy. And innovative pedagogy means new ways of facilitating learning and analyzing the and inspect and impact those, those who are getting the facilities. For example, increasing student thinking ability, creativity, imagination, and there are going to be many more areas that we are going to talk about. So I take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Joseph Manuel, Director, Academic CBSC, to please to start the session. So welcome you again once again. Uh, thank you so much, Ushama, uh, all the office bearers of NPSC and my fellow panelists, uh, Dr. Segal, uh, Dr. Abarna, uh, Dr. Uh, Sudha Acharya, uh, Ms. Uh, Menakshi Sani, Ms. Asha Prabhagar, all the executive members, all the principals and school leaders who are attending this webinar, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much to NPSC for inviting me to this conference and uh, allowing me to share my thoughts and CBSE's vision towards uh, innovative pedagogy. And uh, this is a wonderful time. After COVID, uh, schools are uh, again reopening. Students are coming back to schools. Teachers are also preparing themselves to receive students. And this is the best time to organize this kind of a conference and my compliments to NPSC and its leaders. And NPSC has uh, contributed a lot in the education uh, sector of this country, particularly in the school education sector by contributing quality education. And innovative pedagogy is one way of implementing and expanding quality education in the institutions. So, at a time when the education system in the country is grappled with the COVID crisis and all of us are looking for finding solutions to identify learning gaps, this kind of a conference will help us to share our thoughts and ideas with each other and find solutions to the problems uh, faced by all of us uh, to tackle learning gaps as well as to spearhead with the quality education for our students. In very simple sense, innovative pedagogy is uh, the technology of instruction. So there are many ways of conveying the content as well as the concepts to the, to the uh, learners. And when the learning become meaningful and when learner become a lifelong learner, the purpose of teaching learning will, have, will be achieved. So in that direction, when we look at India's scenario, there's a huge gap. Because of the socio-economic factors, as well as the long rule by the external forces, India's education rate was very low uh, at the time of independence. And after independence, the country has invested a lot and the whole effort was for expanding the education or reaching to all the uh, segment of the society and all the students in the country. 
to that extent great level of achievement has been happened but at the same time there is visible learning gaps at every area the recently conducted national achievement survey the asar survey and many other uh, lipstick studies and uh, detailed studies reveal that the grade appropriate level learning is not happening in the indian school system and one of the reason for this gap is inadequate training of teachers the lack of capacity of the teachers or in a way the teachers or the school system is not able to connect the learning with the real life scenario that is why cbsc has taken all the recent initiative of adopting the ncert's learning outcome as well as taken several steps to promote competency based education in the classroom cbsc has also designated all its principals as pedagogical leaders this is to this is to highlight the importance of pedagogical practices or the teaching learning practices that is happening in the school and also to equip every every teacher and the every learner to attain the 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 objectives uh, laid out in the uh, in the national education policy so the recent uh, adoption of ncert's learning outcome and designating principals as pedagogical leaders and the implementation of competency based education or the experiential learning which is happening in the schools or or uh, preparing the system to adapt and adopt experiential learning all are important to to attain the life goals of students so towards experiential learning many initiatives have been taken cbsc is in partnership with the different organizations and many uh, pedagogical support resources have been provided to the teachers many orientation programs have been organized huge capacity building is taking place and largely cbsc is working in four major areas to bring innovative pedagogies in the classroom one is uh, teaching and learning in the classroom needs to be transformed to help the learner to achieve the 21st century skill or help the learner to meet the challenges of life when he become adult the, he should be able to meet the challenges of the adult life for that capacity building of teachers are required to facilitate students in the classroom and through assessment reforms this is further being accelerated systemic reforms like structured assessment for analyzing learning the holistic progress card school quality assessment and assurance these are all several interventions taken in this direction so when we think about innovative pedagogy we cannot uh, uh we cannot uh, uh ignore the importance of experiential learning so the experiential learning that is happening in the school is very much relevant the un sustainable development goals 2030 assures quality education for all the citizens and to achieve that goal we need to prepare our students we need to prepare our youngsters in the right direction do children and young people acquire the same level of knowledge and competencies during their years of education are the foundations being laid for further, for future and lifelong learning but the lifelong learning is happening or are we preparing our students to be lifelong learners these are all major questions before us only thoughtful and structural reforms that can give students their best chance of learning in the schools there comes the importance of leaf frogging through learning transformation and addressing the gravity of the current crisis so how to do leaf frogging how to bring leaf frogging in the teaching learning process which is happening in the school there is widespread innovation 
in education is required all across the length and breadth of the system. While depth of education gives importance to mastery over the content of the concept, the breadth of education is equipping the learner with the skill set and abilities. So a far-reaching transformation in education that implies transformation within pedagogy is aimed through innovative pedagogies uh, to be adopted by the school. Why pedagogy is so important? Because it is the core of the entire education process. It increases learning outcomes and it is very cost effective because teaching teacher resources available in the system and compare as compared with other new resources, you will be utilizing the available resource in the best fruitful manner. Pedagogical innovation is critical and it is at the heart of the ambition to leave from education system. So pedagogical inno innovation includes and aims for equipping children and adolescents to respond to changes arguably, to enable children to make connections and solve unfamiliar problems, for deep understanding of a large volume of content, it will help the learner for laying a solid ethical, social, and cultural foundation. The new national education policy released in 2020 highlights the importance of holistic, integrated, inclusive, and enjoyable learning is uh, learning that is happening in the schools. It also encourages 21st century skills or transversal skills, adopt experiential learning, including arts and sports integrated and storytelling based pedagogy. These are all various examples of innovative pedagogy that connects learner with real life scenarios. So all these efforts will shift classroom transactions towards competency-based learning and education. So what is innovative pedagogy? Any attempt of curriculum transaction that promotes critical thinking or the 21st, uh, that develops 21st century skills in the learner and anything that connects the learning with the real life scenario that can be called as an innovative pedagogy that improves the inquiry skills, that improves the various life skills, ethics, values, and all other aspects that helps the learner to be successful in life. So what innovative adoption of innovative pedagogies are very essential to transform education. Engage the world and change the world. That is the, that is the uh, fundamentals of adopting innovative pedagogy. So, innovate, so experiential learning, toy-based learning, discovery-oriented learning, all will engage diverse and fruitful ways in which the learner in the teaching learning process. There are so many advantages of experiential learning. It helps the learner to gain valuable experience in the field. It study and learn on a more global and local scale. Understand the importance of real life experience. Participate actively in a dynamic environment. All are importance of experiential learning. It's a cycle. It enables the learner to conceptualize, experiment, experience and reflect on the concepts learned. So art integrated learning, activities based learning, sports integrated learning, inquiry based learning, collaborative learning, project based learning, all are various forms of experiential learning. So CBSE has done many initiatives to promote experiential learning. The, the policy towards uh, hubs of learning, the teacher's training policy, I have already mentioned the principles as pedagogical leaders, various examination reforms, 
academic reforms, outcome-based learning, these are all various steps taken by the CBSC system to adopt innovative pedagogy in its system. So it's a pedagogy to make educational environment student-centric. It will not simply uh, promote too many activities that will not connect learning with the life. But it, oh, but it of course promotes accelerated learning and it, it, it provides a safe and, and learning environment. And it will also promote a change in the mindset. A developmental mindset will be created through this kind of learning. So the most promising feature of experiential learning for leapfrogging is harness informal learning within formal context to create authenticity, engagement, and 21st century skills. Learners can learn to adapt in the real world surroundings through careful observations and generalization. So discovery-oriented learning is also a part of innovative pedagogy. So all these collaborative efforts of bringing learner-centric and the teacher-centric collaborative effort will lead to changes in the classroom as well as bringing innovations in the teaching learning process. So the way forward is the principals or the school leaders to act as pedagogical leaders and take leadership of this program. And they should develop a vision for their system. They should prepare annual pedagogical plan. These are not lesson plans. This is the vision statement, short-term and long-term vision or goal-setting document. Implement experiential learning pedagogies like art and sports integrated learning, storytelling, gamification, whatever innovative way you can think and implement in whatever way teacher is comfortable and whatever way the learner can be taken uh, to the real life scenario, all those can be adopted and adopted in the teaching learning process. To help learners in exploratory and research-based activities, build the capacity of teachers in different child-centered pedagogies. These are all various actions the school leaders can initiate to promote innovative pedagogy in the institutions. So a collective effort, very conscious effort, and systemic reform, all will bring very, very major change in the teaching learning and the, and the outcome that gives after the schooling uh, to the learner. So ultimately, it will bring improvements in student learning and well-being happen at the school level. With this thought, I stop here. So let us remember the famous words of Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. It's always been a pleasure to listen to your thoughts and the great, great initiatives which the Central Board of Secondary Education has started over the years. And uh, you are being at the head, uh, helm of affairs of the academic initiatives of Cent Central Board of Secondary Education. It has been a pleasure to work with you always and to listen to your beautiful thoughts. And thank you for defining uh, today's uh, sessions heading so well and uh, giving us a roadmap to move ahead. We have uh, two very important uh, panelists, uh, uh, those who are to speak, and the time with us is very short. So I will be defining a limit of seven minutes uh, for each of us. And then maybe we are left with some time for a question answer session. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Gwen, and uh, he uh, is an example of uh, setting up the leapfrogging the way he has uh, done it. He is an entrepreneur. He has given solutions to the problems faced by educational institutions and his solutions are being adopted by more than 300 schools in UK. And he is also an academic leader. So I'm very eager to listen to you, sir. Uh, please uh, express your thoughts on today's topic and guide us. 
Hi, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, really appreciate uh, you inviting me here. Um, yeah, my name's Gwyn Apharry. I'm the CEO of XP Schools Trust. Uh, I currently run eight schools in the northeast of, of England and uh, all our schools run what we call an expeditionary learning uh, pedagogy. Um, I, I, rather than talk about it, I'm, I, I'd really like to play a video. Um, I did email it, but I, I can put it in the chat if someone's able to um, play the YouTube video. Um, uh, and below the uh, video is a link to our book, which is called How We XP. Um, and the book um, is free for all you guys to, to uh, read. Uh, and it's a story about how we set up our first XP school in Doncaster in 2014. So if, uh, if, if someone's able to uh, play the video now, that would be fantastic. XP Trust is a family of schools that deeply connects with and makes a positive difference to the communities we serve. Our students work hard to craft high quality products that have an impact on the world around them. Their work lives in the heart of our communities, hospitals, parks, museums, railway stations and beyond. The beautiful work isn't just contained within the classroom walls. So. Let's head out and see just a few examples of our students' activism for ourselves. Here we are in Sir Nigel Gresley Square in the middle of Doncaster Town Centre and this is the newly installed plaque um, that was paid for uh, and funded for by the XP and XPE school students and uh, friends. And it commemorates the fact that near to this site, suffragettes actually stood on boxes and spoke about votes for women. Uh, and it's an extraordinary memorial, an extraordinary piece of work. And um, I'm just so proud that it's here. Um, as a child growing up in Doncaster, I was told about the fact that these women came and spoke and after a hundred years and more, to see this here in place is amazing. And another wonderful thing that happened was on the day we unveiled this, Sarah Gavron, the director of the film suffragette, happened to be on a visit to XP School and came here and was actually here at the unveiling. Hi, I'm Sarah Gavron and I'm the director of Suffragette, the film, and it's brilliant that I'm here today because I came to visit XP School because I was interested in the way that they were modelling a new kind of education which looks fantastic. And coincidentally, it turned out that the Year 9s had, in Year 8, done this incredible project where they'd raised money and they'd researched Suffragettes and who were from Doncaster, like Lillian Lenton, and they'd put up, they'd raised money to create a plaque that is behind us. So I'm delighted to be here on the occasion of this plaque being unveiled with all the young people here who worked so hard on their project and spoke so eloquently about the work they've done. We've, uh, we've worked with XP for a long time now. We, we like to encourage the local schools to display their work, of which obviously you provided a good chunk of down the uh, months and uh, recent years. So we've got a lot of space that can be utilised and we're not just a shopping centre, we're a central part of the local community in essence. Well I like XP because they basically do things differently. There's a, a whole piece to talk about education and, and whether a child is academic or whether they're more practical minded and this is not something you see every day of every week in every shopping centre so, so the, the involvement for us with the local school is incredibly important because it's different. It's not you must do this, this and this. It's thinking outside the box and it's doing things differently, which we really like. I think when you're engaging local people, using their artwork and their work, it just ties things to, together really nicely. You actually invited us to paint an elephant. Yes, <laughs> we did. And it's just, uh, it's just down there, sat outside Elephant Castle, and the kids did a great job. That was the kids at Plover, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. <laughs> and uh, again, they did great piece of work on a project that a school would not normally probably undertake. Yeah, and not every day. Not no, every day. no. <laughs> it's, a, 
he's a seven foot elephant, decorate that kid. <laughs> But they, uh, they did a great job talking about, again, the town of Doncaster, what it means to them, the great places there are to visit. So they, yeah, they did a great job, as you'll, you'll see shortly. And here we are at the newly opened um, Danum Museum and Art Gallery. And I'm delighted to say that there are examples of XP work here in the building. Um, our books, um, How We XP and student books um, that have been published and written uh, by our students are, are here as part of the exhibition about Doncaster. And also a wonderful piece about books from Norton Junior School. Um, so it's wonderful too that our students' work is part of this amazing collection. Here is CAST, our amazing theatre that only opened a few years ago and with the help of Right Up Our Street we were able to hold the premiere here for uh, the students of XP and XPs of their beautiful film uh, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Um, and it was an amazing evening, an amazing occasion and the film is available still to watch online. The list goes on and on. As our schools continue to grow, their activism reaches further into the community a community that starts with crew and expands far beyond the reaches of the school itself. We are our town. Our town is us. So uh, I hope that gives you a flavour of the uh, work that our children are doing. Um, in our town, um, connecting what they're learning in the classroom uh, with their, their local community. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the time, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pass the baton on, uh, if that's okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing this video with us and the type of experiential learning opportunities which you are providing to your children in your schools. It's great to know that. And uh, as Dr. Joseph Emmanuel indicated in the beginning that to make any change, first of all, we have to engage. And uh, the engagement level happens at uh, various uh, levels. The engagement happens in schools. It is also a linkage between schools and universities. So we have uh, Mr. Atul Khosla with us. He is the vice chancellor of Shulni University. And sir, I have, a, I have been, uh, uh, I've seen your university because uh, we have a Bal Bharti school coming up nearby. So that gives us an opportunity to come and see the place. And the way the university has uh, grown up uh, in the last few years and the type of initiatives which you have started. And we also, our children have also experienced one of that initiative from the university, the curiosity quiz in which a very large number of children of our schools also participate. And there is a lot of focus on creativity in that quiz. So good to have you with us, sir. And we are very eager to hear from you about the topic today. Please. Mr. Khosla. I think there is some technical problem. Mr. Khosla, can you hear me, sir? We are not able to connect him, I think. No, I think he needs to unmute. Yeah. Uh, the yes. This is called Murphy's Law. Uh, <laughs> I, I truly apologize. <laughs> Just uh, uh, going off at the last moment. <laughs> so, I, I missed you. Are, you are you are back very soon, sir. Quickly. <laughs> so here also the technology hurdles have been overcome in a very short span of time. So good to listen to you, sir. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saigal. I think it's a very flattering introduction. Uh, before I start, uh, uh, thank you, NPSC, for giving me the opportunity and Shulini the opportunity. Uh, very inspiring talks by uh, Joseph and uh, Gwen. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's always, you know, it's, it's giving me goose pimples already, and I hope I'm able to do justice to the topic. Uh, before I start, uh, I'm going to take a minute about why I believe innovation should happen. And this is a practical view, it's not a theoretical view. 
Uh, I come from a small town. I grew up in a small town called Solon. In my days, it was 20,000 students. And it was not easy to succeed in a sense that no one ever tried for the best institutions of India. I was the first student ever to clear the IIT JE exam from Himachal, for example. It was tough. So while we can argue that Indians are very successful, I mean, so many Indians are CEOs of the world. Why should we innovate our education? I mean, I mean, we're doing well. I go back and say that, look, the outliers will always exist. But there's a big belly of India, what I call the belly of India. These are students who go to smaller towns, lesser privileged children, students who are extremely capable, probably between 60 to 85 percent marks, son children of uh, daughters or sons of uh, middle class, low middle class uh, and the farming community. What happens to them? How do you make this bulk successful? And I think that's a challenge that I take up every day when I go into the classroom. And to me, innovation in pedagogy has to move this belly uh, to make them innovative. And uh, if we can do that, India will become a way, 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 I would say richer, happier, uh, and, uh, and more powerful country. And, and that's the passion that I bring in. So that's, I think, the broader context. I'm a practical person. I'm not an academician. So I'm going to give you nine tips, nine tips teachers, principals, for what I call bringing innovative pedagogy into your classroom. Uh, some of these might be a little controversial. Uh, excuse me if they are, but these are my experiments with, I won't say truth, I'm not Mahatma from any angle, but my experiments with, uh, with pedagogy. I think the first is invest in star teachers. We need to bring, we need to make our our teachers, Shah Rukh Khans and Madhuri Dixits. We have to make stars out of them. Now, everyone uh, cannot be a star. I mean, but think about how we interview when we hire our teachers. We typically hire them for, for knowledge. Who will become a star? Someone with passion, someone with love. So hire your teachers who have the potential to become stars. That's my first tip. One inspiration can change the life of a student. I got it from Arun Shauri. I remember, you know, Manish Jain is there somewhere in the audience. Hi, Manish. He and I went to IDK together. Uh, you know, I was a dhakkan of my class. You know, I graduated with 6.2 CGPA. Manish was very far ahead, I would say. But I have a lot of hair, Manish. Aaj. Both of us balding, though. Sorry, jokes apart. Uh, I learned nothing in the classroom. But then Arun Shauri came, gave one hour of lecture in my fourth year, changed my life. That's what a star teacher can do. Someone that people follow. Train those teachers in theater. How do you make eye contact? How do you involve the class? And, I, and you'll see a big change. So that's point number one or idea number one. Idea number two is going to be making students more empathetic. We spoke about project-based education. Let them do social projects, bring social projects into curriculum. And these social projects are not just about going out and uh, you know, helping the poor. Make them ask questions. For example, when my students go to the nearby school, uh, I'm not saying go and teach. I'm saying come back with a project or with a thought how do we improve their, uh, uh, their learning ability, for example? How do we make them more happy? How do we make them more excited? So introduce social projects uh, into, into your curriculum, if that's possible. Third uh, is about, uh, this topic is about investing inside the classroom. I actually believe outside the classroom. I think most of whatever I've learned was through what we used to call bulla sessions at IIT Kanpur, uh, learning outside the classroom. So investing learning outside the classroom, and there's lots written about it, lots of research done on it. But are there interactive spaces inside your school? Is your school an inspiring place to be? Are there gardens around? With all due respect, and I'm going to make a strong uh, statement over here. You know, I'm a very competitive guy, and I was invited by the director of IIT Delhi. 
and uh, I was going to Delhi and I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm going to come back very depressed because I'm very proud of what I've done at Shulani, but IIT Delhi is like, wow, I'm going to get overwhelmed. And honestly, I went to IIT Delhi, I came back so happy. IIT Delhi doesn't have gardens. I mean, there are, everything is brown. Why can't the director make the lawns of IIT Delhi green? Why can't you have plants everywhere? Please do that at IIT Gandhi Nagar if you haven't done that, Manish. You need to bring inspiration to your students. Gardens. I'm to come. So that's my third thought. Make sure that every part of every wall of your school speaks of inspiration. So one of the experiments I'm doing, for example, at Shulani is to say that we want to create Nobel Prize winners. We don't want to create average guys. So we said, let's start telling stories of Nobel Prize winners to our students. So every wall of Shulini, I've told my staff, should become a museum. So we now have 15 such galleries across the campus. Students come, they look, some don't. But if we have changed one we would have changed a life. Fourth thought, invest in technology. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. And I can tell you that existing technology is not the technology of the future. But your teachers need to understand technology. They need to go through the journey of technology. At least invest in a backbone, invest in a technology backbone. Make sure that uh, all your classrooms are connected through fiber. Make sure that there's uh, Wi-Fi everywhere. Uh, make sure that your, your faculty understands what's really happening around uh, the different forms of technologies which are hitting education, AR, VR, and the likes. But whatever happens, I am sure of one thing, the next 10 years will have a very different set of technology, but technology will drive education for sure. It's happened in every sector. No reason why to believe it's not going to happen in education. That was my fourth thought. My fifth thought is actually very controversial. You know, I wanted to win the Nobel Prize, Manish, and I was a very exciting student. And then 11th standard happened. And other world classes happened. And all the energy went away into mastering Rustic and Halliday and, uh, and uh, Hall and Knight and Agarwal classes. And that's what Kota does to our students. We take away the prime part of their exciting lives, 11th and 12th. So dear students, dear principals, focus on 7th to 9th standard. This is where you can change their lives. This is where you can bring in that inspiration and make them do something different because they are just evolving, but the pressure of standard 10 is not coming in. The pressure of clearing SAT or whatever it is, is not yet there. Make them, and I'm going to come, that's my next point. Make them file patents, make them think. A lot of my friends will ask me, why file patents? How many are commercializing? I say, it doesn't matter. They will understand the journey of patenting. They will understand the journey of innovation. Make them write a research paper in a, in a scientific journal. Just imagine the confidence of a ninth standard kid if he's filed three patents. You know, it's just going to be humongous. We've done that with some schools. You know, we run a program called Ideas That Matter. And uh, we've got like four school patents of six, seven standard students. What amazing, you know, these kids, they've transformed themselves because now they carry that piece of paper and say, oh, wow. And just that journey is amazing. Measure beyond the classroom. We know how to measure grades inside the classroom. Uh, Joseph, sir, you spoke about 21st century skills. You spoke about critical thing skills. You know, in universities, we speak about skills needed to succeed. But are our grades in the classroom correlated with success in life? We have no platform how to measure them. I mean, I've been exploring and I've been asking everyone, help me with a tool that I can measure my student who comes in year one and graduates after four years to understand whether he has learned those skills. Whatever those skills are, me skills, we skills, we all define them differently. We just measure them across, uh, you know, grades, whether you've got a CGP of 8.2 or 9.1 or whatever it is. So invest in that framework, something I'm doing that right now. But I would request all the think tank here today to invest in some common framework where we can start measuring a student in skills that are beyond uh, what we're doing in the classroom, what you call 21st century skills, Joseph, sir. 
Next is in, encourage peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning. I'm a strong believer in peer-to-peer -peer learning. Uh, how do we engage uh, students to sit together? And I'll give a small example over here. This was many, many years ago when I was in school. Uh, I was in the seventh standard and I'm talking about early 80s, I guess. My school teacher made us sit in small groups and she started uh, teaching us in groups. And it was a fantastic year. We became friends. I learned so much. We used to read, we used to teach each other. And then one day, apologies, Dr. Joseph, an inspector from CBSC came. And he wrapped the knuckles of my principal and said, how can you teach like this? So they made us sit in lines then after that, right? So all that innovation sort of went away, which is my last point, which is about take risks. So if the teachers over here, you're all actors. Your classroom is theater. Take risks every day with all the wonderful work he does. He's already looking like an actor. He's got this topi, you know, that you're wearing, Manish. Sorry, I keep on pulling your leg. But go inside the classroom and take risks every time. And you can do that because your audience is very receptive. You know, I, I have spent most of my life in consulting. I can tell you I could not take risks presenting to, uh, to, to my corporate clients. But inside a classroom, I can do anything I want. You know, I'm hopefully the hero of the classroom. I, I, at least I believe so, uh, Mr. Sagal. And can I go out and uh, experiment, whichever way it is? That's a nine. And the tenth thing to all principles was, we speak about autonomy from CBSC. We speak about autonomy from regulators. But are we giving autonomy to our teachers? Are we giving autonomy to our teachers to take their classroom sessions uh, the way they should or they want to? So give them that freedom. So these were my 10 points. Uh, I hope I've added value. You know, I always end up uh, with, uh, with some thoughts about uh, how things should change. So there's a very famous uh, poem by uh, Javed Akhtar called Doraha, which is about taking risk. And uh, I'm going to read that poem uh, for you guys, if you allow me. Uh, he wrote this for his uh, daughter, uh, Zoya Akhtar. Uh, it's called Doraha. Uh, I apologize, uh, Gwen, you might not be able to understand. It's in Hindi, but I'll try to trans translate it. And I'm going to read a few lines. It's about taking risk. Uh, he says, This life is not one road. It's a bunch of crossroads. The first road is very easy. It's a straight road. Mr. Kostler, thank you so much. I'm really thank sorry. Thank you so much. I'm making a point that take the risk. Thank you. Have a great day. I'm so sorry. I know, I know. Time is over. Thank you so much, Mr. Atul. Koslaji. Now, uh, I would like to, you know, just. I'd just like to mention, ma'am, uh, our fourth speaker for today was uh, Mr. Sridhar Rajagopalan, and he was, due to a technical glitch, he was unable to join. But uh, he shared a wonderful video and a presentation on uh, several innovative pedagogies, and I think that's available in the Knowledge Center for all of us to uh, have a look at and learn from. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure we have time even for a question answer session, no, I think. No. I, I think we might have first to, you know, because Mr. Atul Khosla's, you know, in any case, I'm going to visit his university along with LD. I'm coming there with Mr. Sehgal to come to your university. I'm really very much, you know, this. And the points that you have talked about, invest in your teachers, making students more empathetic and, you know, learning, investing outside, invest in technology, you know, make them think. See, a lot of things, I'm not trying to boast about NPSC. But many things, especially because of SUPW, socially useful, productive work, we are going, we are children are going to Cheshire home, they are going to like, we are not just going for the sake of it. You will see to it the, the kind of transformation which takes place when they come back. That becomes a part of experiential learning. You know, and they go there, and that has been really brought a big change in our children. And peer to peer that you have talked about, a lot of programs which are going on. 
there are many other things that our schools are doing but then there are many more points which have just you know elaborated and which will be looked into but many things are being done and it's wonderful so there's nothing that you know we felt that it was out of uh, uh, context and when it comes to uh, mr harry your your uh, you know uh, presentation was so beautiful you know that is experiential learning joyous atmosphere everywhere everybody enjoying everybody you know it's not artificial it's natural and when so i come I to mr joseph when i come to mr joseph that's very important because that is our base he has talked about assessment reforms which are see we might go ahead umpteen number of changes so many things but if we do not have assessment reforms holistic report cards lifelong learning right. art sports being integrated this needs so to I be so i think as as uh, dr joseph said that engage the world and change the world i think <laughs> that's a <laughs> take away from the entire you know, session you know uh, it's and very important uh, uh, parna before we really take up the questions i would like we don't to really be... have time for questions i'm so sorry no, no, okay so i would like to i have written something out of what all everybody has spoken i lg think... do i have your permission lg i have that your is a summary uh, you Just don't need minute. any permission ma'am i think take one minute and wind up yeah. and then we are great to our panelists convey your learning thing. yeah see learning outcomes whatever i have picked up from this is innovative teaching methods the first is children have a strong sense of identity by this children are connected with and contribute to their world which just now mr you know hosla also talked about children have a strong sense of well being you know getting connected and children are confident and involved learners lifelong learning that we were talking about and children are effective communicators because they have allowed them to communicate you have allowed them to speak allowed them to join together to be together and then experience thank you so much now i hand it over to aparna please look into thank you so much all of you for uh, being with us at the city thank you thank you yes, aparna also the npsc team i'd like to thank all the panelists and our two moderators for the day thank you so much I'm really sorry we ran sorry, out of time but i think a lot of takeaways out of my thing but i thought it was important thank you i think a lot of takeaways so many Namaskar. people listening we learn plenty thank you so much thank you so much all of you thank you thank you Thank you panelists for this insightful session.